Uh, hi. Uh, right. I'm going to talk to you about technology and power. And I guess at the end of this, what I would love is if the next time you're using technology in a project, you think kind of differently about whose power you've centred by using that technology, who you're giving power to, who you're taking it away from, and I guess what values you're centering. And I say this partly because, you know, I, I spent a lot of time uh, working in the arts using new technologies. And uh, the words that tend to come up that are uh, used are kind of really nice, big, expansive words like democratise, open up, broadcast, co-create. Um, but something that has really happened in the last 10 years is that the tools and the technologies we're tending to use to do that are not particularly democratic. They tend to come out of Silicon Valley. They tend to come out of very libertarian capitalist mindset. They may be offered to you extremely cheaply or for free. Um, and that is because they are hooking you and your audience into a dependence on those tools, uh, potentially because they're collecting data, because they're driving your audience to adverts. Um, and that really, you know, they're turning you all into a product and they're turning you into a product that is serving both, I think, uh, a deeply capitalist agenda but an entrenching one that is not particularly liberating for anyone it's kind of a delusion you know we we have our, our phones in our pockets and we feel like we're free but actually you know we're en meshed in a, a completely different system of power that is is not transparent to us <clears throat> and there are two quotes that i've been thinking about a lot lately um, the uh, first is from uh, the amazing American anthropologist uh, Donna Haraway, who wrote this in 1985, uh, which is you know an extraordinarily long time ago to be thinking about how we live with com um, with um, computers. And this is a line from her book, the the Cyborg um, um, Manifesto, and it's. Our best machines are made from sunshine. Pe people are nowhere near a so fluid being material and opaque. And I think about this all the time, partly because like, I don't really understand it. I mean, it could mean anything. But one of the things I take it to mean uh, is not that our best, uh, our best um, ma um, machines are made out of the kinds of, of devices and bits of a kit that I'm using to talk to you now <clears throat> you know these things are made up of glass and metal and processors that will hang around the planet for hundreds if not thousands of years uh, and they're and meshing us in systems of surveillance um, they're not kind of radiating warmth they're not nurturing they're not um, creating life and although it may make us feel like we're infinitely and continually connected, is that really, um, I don't know, the, a sense of purpose and a sense of growth that we want to centre as we think about technology? And I have another quote, uh, which I will more or less leave, leave you um, with, which is f f from uh, the... The, the feminist ac academic Tizzy Bhattacharya, which is, uh, hang on, I just need to look at my notes. Uh, what if life and life making became the basis of a social organisation? And one of the, <clears throat> um, I guess one of the challenges is how do we move away from promoting like making, you know, whether that's on YouTube or Instagram or on a podcasting platform to life making how do we stop you know just promoting the senseless of propagation material through the networks in ways that is ultimately paying back to these billionaires in the silicon valley 
and the ways that they are kind of changing their society. How can you, as creators and producers and people who think and challenge the way the world works, put life-making and sunshine at the heart of the ways that you use technology and the way you think about it and who you're empowering and how? And I don't have a direct answer for exactly what that is going to look like, but I hope it's going to provoke you. And I hope it's going to, I don't know, the next time you think, what if I do an Instagram Live? Maybe you will think slightly differently about it and think instead, what if I'm, you know, what could I do to turn this into sunshine? Thank you.